Welcome to PVA Blood. Defend your planet with the defense cannon. This may look like a big project, but I'm just going to be using methods that I've already covered in previous videos. There's nothing complicated or expensive here, just you have to be willing to kind of cannibalize the nerf gun. Speaking of, the first thing I did it was to pick which one to sacrifice. Please understand that all of these were found on the side of a road in the trash, and most of them are broken. Obviously you don't actually need brand name nerf guns, it was just by pure chance that I found these. Disassemble them and think about how you can reuse the parts and how might they all sit together in a different configuration. Also, I'm going to be using some recycled styrofoam and then later on some EVA tiles. Make sure you use your pocket marine to double check scale. Firstly, I disassembled the gun and then took the screws out. I did this for two reasons, one to help with the sense of scale, and two so I could get at the internals and remove them. As the gun is already broken, these internals are just adding a lot of unnecessary weight, but on the other hand, they also have a lot of detail which make them excellent for use in other projects in the future. So pull it apart, but save all the pieces. You can easily see how the firing mechanisms would make for great Archaeotech or the components of a Starship or an Underhive. Cut off the hand grip, it's not going to be needed anymore. A handsaw will work fine, but for the sake of speed I ended up using a Dremel. If you use a Dremel, make sure you wear a mask and eye protection. Whilst it's not necessarily the cheapest tool, I did get my Dremel and more accessories than I'll ever use for about 50 bucks. Not nothing, but worth considering if you're into kit bashing. I'm going to be sanding off the logos and text from all the gun pieces. Again, hand sanding will work, but the sanding attachment on a Dremel also works great and will save a lot of time. I'll say it again, eye protection and a mask. Even if you're doing it all by hand, it's a good idea. Whilst the Nerf guns are sold to kids, I don't think they ever intended for those kids to inhale the gun. Yeah, look at this stuff. It's no joke. You probably don't want that inside your lungs. Ugh. Once you've gotten rid of the decals, rough up all the pieces with some sandpaper. It adds texture and more surface area for the paint to stick to. Also, an abandoned space gun probably isn't going to have a gloss finish. Now hit all the pieces of your gun with a coffee coloured or just brown will do primer. Nice even coat. No need to wait for the brown to be dry, hit it with an orange or a red spray. Keep it patchy and uneven, it's going to be rust after all. When the paint is dry, you can begin your salt weathering. This needs some cheap hairspray and then some salt flakes definitely has to be flakes otherwise it will look weird and some regular water the water will just help the salt stick on sprinkle a generous amount of salt over the pieces bear in mind that the areas that get more salt will be the ones which will show the most corrosion still put on more salt than you actually think you'll need as a lot does tend to fall off when you start hitting it with the hairspray the hairspray will just help seal the salt to the surface with a following step where you paint everything I'm using hairspray instead of a gloss varnish because the hairspray when it gets wet will dissolve and thus lift the salt and reveal the nice rust colour that we've applied to the pieces. In case you haven't already figured it out, I'm an incredibly lazy painter. So spray can white over the gun pieces. That's it. When that's all dry, get an old toothbrush. Regularly dip it in some water and then just lightly scrub off the salt flakes, revealing the corrosion. Nice. Wear gloves. This is salt and it can be a bit stingy. I want this terrain to look like it may have belonged to the same civilization that those dead transformers did in one of my earlier videos. So for this reason, I'm going to be using a sponge and some red paint to add some little details over the gun. 
This is just going to further highlight how this piece has seen better days as well as give some more detail to catch your eye, particularly on the large flat bland areas. Again, no brushes, scavenge sponge and the cheapest red paint. Just lightly dab the paint on using the sponge over a bunch of the panels. I used some tape here and there to help keep the lines clean where I wanted them, but I wasn't too worried about precision or making mistakes as I am going to be adding a lot of weathering later on. Eye catching. I gave the sponge areas plenty of time to dry and then I applied a brown wash over the entirety of the piece. The wash is a mixture of one part paint, one part PVA and about eight parts water and I just slather it over everything. The mix of browns is up to you but just get it to a colour that you think looks nice and grubby. Any areas where the wash may have pulled or you think it's hiding some details or just doesn't look quite right, you can dab off using some tissue or some paper towel. The styrofoam is going to be used as the base of the defence cannon as well as some cover for any infantry beneath it. I want it to look like that it was either built into the earth or had been submerged by the ages themselves. To achieve this, I'm going to be cutting some EVA foam tiles and placing it around the edges of the styrofoam itself. Don't forget to check the scale, make sure everything looks right using your pocket marine. The inner step of the styrofoam cover is looking a little bit steep, so I'm just going to cut out a piece of EVA foam and place that inside just to shallow it out slightly. I want the inner level of this cover to have more detail. I could achieve this by filling it with sand or debris, but I want to make it look slightly more deliberate like there's a man or Xenos made pattern going to work here. To do this, I made a roller using a washed meat tray, an empty can of deodorant and some rubber bands. I'm using some gap filler putty on this inner panel, just a really thin layer, which I then lightly roll the roller over and bingo, a nice Xenos looking tile pattern. The EVO foam is going to make up the hillside around the Xenos fortification. As it's going to be a natural formation, don't worry about it if it's not too even, but do try to make sure that the slope is nice and shallow so your minis are not going to fall over when they're standing on it. The base of these pieces is going to be 3mm thick MDF. I've already run out of the IKEA furniture I was cannibalizing earlier, but thankfully this stuff is easily available from most hardware stores. Just trace around the base level and cut. I decided that I wanted these pieces to look even more submerged in the earth, so I'm going to cut another layer of EVA foam to help hide them. Remembering, of course, to apply a nice slope for my minis. This additional depth will not only make the piece look more submerged, but it's also going to add more support when I apply the cannon. As you can see, I've cut a channel for the base of the gun to sit in. Use PVA to glue all the foam and MDF together and then give it some time to dry. Back to the big gun itself. I'm using some homemade weathering powder which is made out of some pastels and some baking paper which I'm putting down first to catch any excess. The powder itself I got the idea from Midwinter Minis and I'll put a link to the video which he shows you how to make it. Just apply tons of this stuff over every piece using a big brush. Nice, rusty, dusty effect. Now I'm going to be wiping off some of that weathering powder in areas where I think I might have gone overboard, as well as in some areas where I want to bring back some of those original colours. You know, just make it so you can actually see that red and white coming through, instead of everything being overly muted. You can see that the corrosion is coming through and that when it collects in the little crevices, it makes a really convincing corrosion. Super easy. The baking paper worked exactly how it's supposed to. Minimal wastage and it helped keep the work area uh, relatively tidy. Ready to serve, brother. Orders? Make bricks smaller. Attack! Feel the Emperor's wrath! We have destroyed that which offended the Emperor. Yes, you did. 
We shall be remembered in the book of honor. So those brick chunks I will be gluing to the bottom of the cannon to keep the center of gravity low and make it more stable. Now you can just apply some more of that gap filler over the EVA foam. This will help even out the hillside and connect it to the MDF base, as well as on the foam itself to help hide any gaps in the foam. When all the filler is on, put the piece in the sun and go grab yourself a cold one. Nice. Now the piece is dry, I'm just gonna grab a sanding block and we're just gonna even things out, get rid of any unwanted raised edges. Surprise, this whole time I've actually been working on two pieces. It's the exact same method, except I just left some holes to put the other pieces in. I'm gonna make a shield generator. Now that all the gap filler putty is nice and dry, we're just gonna be getting some sand that I've baked from my garden and mix in some PVA glue with a small amount of paint. Put the paint glue mixture on, and when you've got some good coverage, just sprinkle the sand over. This is gonna give it some nice texture that'll look really good when it's dry brushed. Shake off any excess onto a tray and then shake that tray back on. Whilst you're waiting for it all to dry, grab yourself another cold one. This next step is optional. So there should be a time skip here if you're happy with the texture of sand. If you'd like something a bit more detailed, a bit more appropriate for 28 millimeter scale, I'm gonna be adding some grout, which I think looks more like sand than gravel at this sort of size. Please make sure you're wearing a mask as this is some really fine dust, but you are using the same method. Glue, paint, sprinkle. The only difference when using grout is you wanna mix some PVA glue and water in a spray bottle and then spray over the grout. This will hold it in place before you paint it. For the fortification, I'm just gonna be mixing some white paint with a dollop of PVA glue and some water until the consistency is like milk. I'm gonna paint the entire fortification with it. This will help protect the foam as well as give a nice color. Corrugated iron. For this, I'm gonna use some cardboard that I've recycled. Just peel off the paper from one side, revealing the corrugation beneath and cut it to the correct depth and length for the trench. This is zero dollar materials, super easy to get a hold of and easy to build. Nice. Grab some balsa wood stirrers and just put some grooves in it either using a tool like your fingernail or as I do, a wire brush. This will help make it look like actual pieces of timber. Cut it to size and glue it in place. If you don't have any of these balsa wood stirrers, which I just got from a hobby store, you can use some coffee stirrers. You can see this is making the duck boarding on the bottom of a trench. Following that, I'm gonna use some matchsticks, again, available from most hobby stores. Cut them to size and just glue them in place with PVA. These are gonna be the supports against the corrugated iron. You've probably noticed that I make a lot of use of my pocket marine just to double check this scale as I'm working along. Already looking really good. Following this, I'm gonna start making some sandbags for the trench tops. You'll recognize these from many of my previous videos. Just some air drying clay that I'm rolling out to half a centimeter thick long tubes, then pressing flat. Now when you're pressing it flat, try to make sure that tube is about a centimeter wide and then run the blade along each edge and then cut it to about one and a half centimeter long segments. These will be your sandbags. Glue them in place with PVA. This is all stuff you've seen many times in my previous videos. And don't forget to double check the scale as you're working to make sure everything's looking right. I also made some little firing holes. Um, you see these a lot in artwork for trenches. It's just an extra piece of balsa wood propped in place with some more sandbags. Even close up, even unpainted, no washers. This is already looking like a trench. Now I want that styrofoam to match the weathered guns and gun parts that I've already made. So I'm gonna be adding some little red details like I did before using a sponge again, just randomly placed. Now I can't use the same salt weathering technique on the styrofoam because obviously it's softer. So I'm gonna use a large piece of sponge and some brown. Just put that on the edges. This is me doing a test record. Something doesn't look quite right. Okay, things are thrown off slightly here. Probably an earlier edit. <sighs> I hope this doesn't cause more problems. I ended up using multiple colors of brown, and then once that was dry, I applied the same brown wash over the entirety of the piece like I did with the guns 
just like I did with the gun and the extra pieces, are going to be applying that weathering powder. Apply it generously and use the tissue to tidy. Look at that. Two completely different materials, yet they're already looking like they're a matching set. Not gonna lie, honestly pretty pleased with this result. Moving back to the trenches, I'm just going to be applying some white paint mixed with PVA and a bit of water until it's about the same texture as milk, and just apply that to all of the sandbags. This will just help seal and protect them. Now for the step that I was, admittedly, nervous about. I'm going to be gluing the gun to the actual foundation of the terrain piece. I'm going to be using a hot glue gun for this, and you can see why I added the weight in the back of the gun to help keep it balanced and sturdy. I was very generous with the application of glue, I do not want this space cannon moving at all. I also added some of the extra parts to the actual base, um, just to make it look like perhaps this is where some energy stores are, or some sort of other resource. Now to hide the glue, I'm going to be cutting some of these uh, leftover foam pieces to size, you could use leftover EVA from before, I'm going to be putting these down as rubble and rocks around the base. These stones are all off cuts and they're just going to be held in place with some PVA glue. Put down plenty of them and I'm also going to add some around the base of the foundation. Anywhere I thought some more detail would be appreciated or where I thought I could still see some of the old uh, edges showing through. I also put them around anywhere there was glue, knowing full well that I'm going to be painting over these shortly. Be generous, don't worry about it. Following this, I'm going to be making another wash as I'm going back to the trenches again. This wash is one part paint, one part glue, and about eight parts water, maybe nine parts, until you're happy with the color. You can see that I'm applying the same color over the entirety of the trench. Sandbags, the iron siding, the duckboards, everything. Trenches, this is no great surprise, are not nice places, so dirt and muck gets everywhere. Anywhere I thought there was perhaps too much wash, I just dabbed with a piece of tissue. Once that's dry, you're gonna be doing some dry brushing. I'm just taking some white and adding a small amount of brown to create the colour I'm going to be using to dry brush. Dry brush what? Dry brush the entire foundation of the trenches. Everything except the gun and the foundation cover. So make sure you've wiped off most of the actual paint from your brush and then drag that over the surfaces. This is going to bring all those little details into the light and make them pop. If you think things are looking a little bit too bright, if the paint is still wet, you can wipe it off with a tissue or just apply some of that wash from earlier. Look at that. It's looking like an actual alien landscape. Very cool. Now I'm going to be gluing these extra pieces in. I'm going to be making some sort of perhaps alien shield generator or just generator. And these are all going to be glued in with a hot glue gun. Nothing fancy, very simple. Like every mistake or unintended consequence in life, you can hide it using quick drying cement. Except I'm going to be using this mixture of tile grout, PVA glue, paint and some water to paint some rocks and to fill in any gaps or cracks that I've noticed on the terrain once everything is dried. When you mix it together you want the consistency to look like delicious chocolate cake mix, except obviously don't eat this, it would not be any good for your ear internals. Yeah, not at all despite how delicious it looks, you really want that chocolate cake texture. Paint it into these cracks and gaps using an old paintbrush and it will fill in nicely. You can also use this to build up any sand, drifts or dirt that you'd expect to pile up around a building over time. And once that's dry, you can just dry brush it with the white paint you did earlier and then add some plants. The plants in question I sourced from the dollar store and are the same set that I use in my Dead Transformers video. They're super cheap and really easy to use. All that's involved in adding plants to this piece of terrain is punching a hole with a skewer, adding PVA glue, and cutting off a suitably sized part and sticking it in the hole. Again, this is an optional step. If you want this to look like a completely dead world, don't add plants. When choosing the plants, don't be afraid of exotic colors and shapes. Not looking like an actual earth tree is a good thing. It helps the recognizable yet alien mood I'm going for. I'm placing the plants around the rocks and around the base of the terrain features as it keeps most of the space free for your models during games and appears much more natural. When the plants were down I added some homemade flock. This flock is just painted dried sponge thrown in a blender and actual herbs that I dried in the oven which also went through a blender. Just put down some glue and sprinkle it on. I also added some to the cannon itself. Nature is returning to this world after all 
And I can also use the flock to obscure areas where I'm not totally happy with the paintwork, or I might have bumped or chipped things as I went along. I did this same method on both pieces, just adding flock here and there. Now you'll recognize these from my previous videos, and I recently also released a completely separate video detailing how to make your own spent bullet casings. To apply them, just sprinkle them onto some PVA glue, let it dry, and then put down another layer to protect them. That's it. Try to think where it would make sense for soldiers to have gunfights, like defensive positions or desperate charges, and sprinkle some down. You can also put them down where you think the piece needs some more detail or attention. Thanks for checking out my content. I've got an Instagram if you'd like to see some sneak previews of my other videos. And uh, yeah, let everything dry and you've got yourself a nice scenic piece of terrain for your next game. You can see that everything matches up nicely with the previous projects that I've made. Meaning, if you've been following along with my builds, you'll have a completely detailed battlefield. The shield generator and cannon themselves had large areas of open space perfect for adding little things like barrels or tank traps, cargo containers, and even just large vehicles so they can move through. So that way you can have a single piece of terrain to vary it up for different games and battles. I feel pretty happy with the results. The colors seem to match the dead transformers from earlier, and it doesn't look too weird for the trenches to be sitting in the background. Tanks, knights, infantry, everything's fighting over this ancient alien tech. Their creators are long dead, but the bloodshed has not stopped. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving my uh, channel a like and a subscribe. I hear other YouTubers say that all the time, so I presume it does something good. And if nothing else, seeing the numbers go higher is a good incentive for me to keep making more content. Hope to see you again. Thanks for watching.